Uh, call this February 12th meeting of the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission to order. My name is Jim Bledsoe and I am chairman of the commission. This time I'd like to ask everyone, what are you laughing about Bobby? I'm not going to be chairman for long, so one more day. <laughs> you get rid of me. This time I'd like to ask everybody to please put their cell phones on vibrate and if you do have to take a call, please step out in the lobby to take that. We would appreciate it. Also, there's a tablet being passed around the room. If you would, please write your name and uh, what group or special interest you're with. Uh, that way we'll have a record of your attendance. Uh, when the committees are meeting today, if you want to address the commission, please uh, come up to the microphone here in the front and uh, during the topic that we're talking about and uh, address either me or the chairman of that committee. Please don't have any banner back and forth with the audience. If you have a topic that's not on the agenda, please wait till the end and uh, I will ask if there's anything else to be brought before the commission. I'm looking around the room, I was going to announce our special guest today. Uh, as always, we've got Mr. Ron Crabtree. Uh, we've got Representative John Jernigan. Uh, pardon, oh. And we've got uh, John Daniels uh, from the Tennessee Fur Harvesters, President of the Tennessee Fur Harvesters, and National Vice President. I said John Jernigan, it's Darren Jernigan. I know a John Jernigan over in East Tennessee. I apologize. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> it's a good bunch of people. Uh, Jim Maddox is here from the Shikar Safari, and uh, Sam Coleman from Metro. Uh, also, Miss Angie Cannon is in the back room. Glad to have the wives here. And my lovely wife sitting on the front row. So I appreciate her coming. So uh, At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Walter Cook to come up and do our invocation and pledge. If you'd all please stand. May we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for giving us the ability to come to this place and meet. As our commission meets, guide us, watch over us as we make decisions to serve the will of the people, to enhance, protect, and conserve the wildlife of this great state. And we have, when we have concluded our business here this day, please take each and every one of us back to our home safely to be with our families. We give you thanks for all the bounty of the land and the privilege and the honor to serve the people of this state and maintain that bounty. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Miss Danette, will you please call the roll? Well, Chad Baker. Here. Jim Bledsoe. Here. Harold Cannon. Here. Jeff Cook. Here. Bill Cox. Here. Kurt Holbert. Here. Connie King. Jeff McMillan. Here. Jim Ripley. Here. Bill Swan. Here. Trey Teague. Here. David Watson. Here. Jamie Woodson. Here. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Danette. Uh, at this time, we've got the minutes from the uh, January 21st meeting in Memphis. Uh, we can read them and go through them if you so please. If not, I would entertain a motion to approve. Second. Rip, uh, Jim Ripley made the motion. Jamie Woodson seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> Director Carter, do you have any announcements at this time? Just one, Mr. Chairman, I know y'all will be meeting with members of the Wild Turkey Federation after this meeting, and uh, your credentials to, to do that should be here before you leave, and we'll try to get those to you. Thank you, sir. Any other announcements from Commission? Right okay. Real quick. It is really good to have somebody back in our midst today, and that's John Gregory, uh, Regional Manager for Region 4. Uh, 
John's a fighter. He's been battling some things the past couple months. John, this is the best you've ever looked. And it's sure good <laughs> it is sure good to have you here instead of that Ripley guy. So no, it is it is so good to see your face here, buddy. We're we're glad you're here. Any other announcements? If not, uh, moving into our program, uh, I'd like to welcome up Representative Darren Jernigan uh, to remark concerning the Stewart's Ferry portion of Piercy Priest. <laughs> Rock stars like to hold the mic. <laughs> no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and members, and shout out to Jamie, who's my representative. I appreciate that you all let me uh, come first. I, I've got a big boy job that I've got to go to. It really pays the bills, but um, letting me cut through, I, I'm grateful for for that. Um, what I want to address today, and, and believe me, I only show up when I get a number of emails and phone calls and that triggers my response to to an issue that's happening uh, in the in the south southeast part of my district which is on the Percy Priest Lake and but basically what's happened is is Metro Nashville's allow, allowed a lot of development happen that's and right next to core property and and some of this development has has gotten to where there's not even a hundred yards buffer to the, to the property or to the lake and we're starting to get um, some some safety issues some quality of life issues right there where um, some some hunting is going on on the core property and it's becoming more and more urban but I tell you what what I would like to do I have a couple of constituents of mine who has some evidence, and I have some some emails and 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 some pictures and evidence that I want to submit to to the to the committee. I don't know who I'd give that to, but to you, Mr. Chairman, and and um, and then after they said, and I've told them to be brief and and not to repeat themselves, and 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 after they're done speaking, I want to say a few words and wrap it up. If that'd be okay. All right, thank you. Let's start with with uh, Jimmy in first, and then. Thank you, Commission, for taking the time to hear us today. Um, my name is Jimmy Gafford. I live on Thorbury Drive. It's in Hermitage, which backs up against the Corps of Engineer property. A um, little bit about myself. I was a Metro Police Officer for 30 years and actually worked the Hermitage sector for a large portion of that, about the last 15 years of my career. So speaking not only as a homeowner that lives against this property, but a police officer who has answered calls regarding the same issue along the Percy Priest corridor all around the lake. Um, as you're all aware, Davidson County is growing like crazy. And in that process, house property around any lake is always prime property to live. People like living near the waterways because of the recreation and other things. So areas that used to be in Davidson County, like the area that I live in, used to be all farmland, which was no big issue with people hunting back on the core property and hunting on the farms and those type of things. But as developments come along, it's not on my area, but in other areas you're going to hear people speak about, um, the area between the residents and the water is, there's not very much buffer there. Suds Creek, if you're familiar with the Percy Priest area, runs up behind my house. Between my property line and, and in the water, there's not a hundred yard buffer. So according to even y'all's regulations that you shouldn't even be, you should be a hundred yards from the residents anyway to hunt. Well, there's no, but people continue to hunt back there. Um, even though it's required to hunt with, um, muzzleloader and shotguns, rifles aren't supposed to be used. There's, there's evidence and some of the neighbors will show you where there's been two, two, three ammunition found back there and everything else. Um, but, it's, it's just becoming a real safety issue with with developments that's come along the lake area. The new elementary school they built over on Smith Springs Road this year had problems with hunters coming in 
across that property area after hunting back behind there, behind the YMCA camp area where they hunted for many years. But it's all, I guess, indirectly involving the issue of development around the lake and and it's becoming a real safety issue with that. We worked with the TDRA or tried to work with the TDRA one time. There's a section of Stewart's Ferry that dead ends as you're going towards uh, Suds Creek. On some maps, it will actually show as a right of way. There's actually an old bridge down there that people go down there and fish off of. Um, Metro moved it to where there would be no parking along Stewart's Ferry because there was such an issue with trash dumping and, and people just making a mess down there. Um, someone in TWRA decided that they would take their portion of what was zoned to their, their area and allow parking on their area and required Metro to open back up the street. Since then, multiple times I've had to call Public Works, have them come down and clean up not this a few beer cans, but truckloads of debris. Even though it's on TWRA's property, Public Works will get out and remove it quicker versus just leaving trash piled up. So we have that issue, and as some of the neighbors will testify to in a few minutes, this continuous gunfire, and I think because they think it's part of areas that, like a farm that's open to them, they should be able to go back there and do that. Um, so I, that's the dilemma that we're having. This not in my area, but all around the lake. And I think it's time for the commission to possibly look at creating some buffer zones or, or at least no farm areas around the lake, especially in these areas where there are, it's just really becoming so close to the houses. And many times hunters get lost, turned around the woods. And of course, as soon as they find something they're familiar with, some houses, something they'll either start walking the tree line or coming down the street with a rifle thrown over their shoulder or a shotgun thrown over their shoulder. As we all know that the muzzle loaders nowadays aren't the Daniel Boone things of the time past. They're, they're almost, they're just like regular rifles almost. So I won't keep any more of your time. If you have any questions, I'll be free to be happy to answer anything. Any questions from the commission right now for uh Mr. Gafford. Okay. Thank you. My name's Mike Savage. I'm a homeowner on Stewart's uh, Ferry you, Pike. Please. Excuse me. Here, you guys Turn can pass way. this around. Uh, What'd you say your name was again? Mike Savage. Savage. And I'm a homeowner on Stewart's Ferry Pike. It's a beautiful area. Mm -hmm. um, we live near a TWRA parking lot. Um, it's a really nice parking lot. The, the road kind of dead ends at a cement uh, abutment. Uh, it's kind of recessed into the ground. There's, there's trees that go up real high, and it's a, it's a, it's a nice area for, for access for hunting. However, it's also a perfect area <coughs> in an urban environment for nefarious stuff to happen at night. Um, police protection isn't real good out there. Um, a regular thing is to hear gunfire at nighttime, and these aren't these aren't hunters. It's not hunting season. Um, it's not ammunition that should be used for hunting. But I just wanted to testify that on Christmas Eve, about 9:30 at night, there were hundreds of rounds fired in front of my house. There were brass shells in front of my house in the TWRA parking lot, and all the way down to where Mr. Gafford says there's an old bridge over Stewart's Ferry Pike. This ammunition is is um, 9 millimeter, 40 Smith, and 223. None of those would be legal hunting rounds in the area. And besides just disturbing the general peace and tranquility of the area, it's kind of dangerous for that to be happening at night. My neighbors, who couldn't be here today because he's at work, actually hid underneath the bed for, a, for an hour. Um, and this, this, this happens regularly. There are, there are other things that happen at that parking lot that have nothing to do with hunting. There's drug use, drug sales, um, you name it. Some other people might testify to other things. But I just wanted you guys to be aware of what's happening down there. Um, I don't have anything against hunting, but I have, I have something against that.
Thank you, Mr. Savage. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Billy Small, and I also live on Stewart's Ferry. Uh, I've been in this area at this residence for 26 years. And when uh, we built our home, uh, the access to get to this parking area, which Mike is talking to, there were probably 15 homes. Now there are approximately 100 homes. People are coming down there. I'm not, I have nothing against hunting and fishing, but there's a lot more activity going on down there and there's no security. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and there's numerous times that, uh, that the people are not doing what they're supposed to. They're not supposed to be drinking on wildlife management area. To my knowledge, uh, TWRA has uh, not been very, uh, very helpful in securing this. Uh, they tell us to call Metro. Metro doesn't want to come out there and, and uh, deal, deal with this. Um, again, in our area, there's 100 homes that are affected for people to get back there. In this area of Suggs Creek, I would say behind our homes, there's 25% of the hunting area available. 75% um, is on the other side of this bridge where there's a straight line shot down Stewart's Ferry where they could put another parking area for people to get to. They already have one small one, but people would have to walk two miles to get to, to an area to hunt. But yet, there's only 14 homes affected on this stretch of Stewart's Ferry off of Mount Juliet Road, which, uh, and they've got plenty of, of land to put a parking space. Uh, again, our, our main uh, problem is security and people that are down there that are not supposed to be. And as Mike said, drug activity, um, just parking, partying, it, that's not what your property is to be used for. I think that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody on the commission have any questions for Mr. Small? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Utes. I live on Granny Ride Lane. And I've lived there for 10 years. I walk my dog around that peninsula every morning. And I've seen drug use. I've seen a prostitute there with a client. An old neighbor uh, told me repeatedly that he was very scared because people were parking in front of his house. I've seen people hunting in the state park. I, I had somebody fire a rifle off about 10 feet from me because he was mad that I was walking my dog. And uh, so that's just what I wanted to say. Thank you, Mr. Utes. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Alma Sanford, and my house backs up to Corps of Engineer property. I'm a retired lawyer. When I moved back home to Tennessee, I was living in Falls Church, Virginia, in a concrete jungle. When I walked into that house and saw the trees, I was thrilled to death because I grew up on a farm. I wanted to live there. That was 15 years ago. It was a wonderful place to live. I often walked on the former road that was Mount D Road down across the Old Stones River before the lake was created. I have deep roots in Nashville. I remember when the lake was created. I wanted to live there. I loved it for about three or four years. Then the gunshot started. By six o'clock on Sunday morning, anytime, sitting on the back porch, having to go in the house behind the brick wall for fear of being shot at my own, on my porch. We experience all the things that the people have spoken about. I'm down Hobson Pike from them. I'm just across that bridge. It's a beautiful area. We we love it and we want it protected. We know that you all have your hands tied, that you have a budget and you don't have enough money to hire enough people to police this property. We've had some of your agents come and talk to our homeowners association. I live in Long Hunter Chase subdivision. We have 300 homes there. About half of us are affected by the being close in proximity. I see people at night on four-wheelers. I hear gunshots at all hours of the day and night. 
and Katie bar the door on New Year's Eve. It's just wild there. We really need some protection. And if you need us to contact our legislators to ask for money for you, I will be leading the parade to help you. <laughs> Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Ms. Sam. Please come up. Please. Oh. Hello, I'm Ronnie Sherrill. I live on Thoroughbred Drive. <coughs> I've lived there say, for 19 years. I uh, just wanted to make sure you heard my voice. And uh, at one time we had at Stewart's Ferry, there was a blockade put up. For some reason, they took that away. And if they just put that back up, that would solve a lot of these problems. Uh, thank you, sir. Cheryl. Uh, sir. Joel Wood. I live on uh, Mountain View Road. Um, exactly my property is one mile from the core property uh, going back towards Murfreesboro Road. Um, just just like uh, this, this lady said, uh, we hear constant gunfire out there. Um, behind my property um, is approximately somewhere around 80 acres of undeveloped property. Um, I know uh, a lot of it's on potential to be developed, but it's been left overgrown for years. Um, you know, we, we've been hearing gunshot, automatic weapons, uh, even behind my house in, in this area. I know that doesn't really, you know, it's not TWRE land, but it just goes to show that, you know, just like we've, we've heard testimony, anywhere people feel like they can just plop into a piece of unused land and, and fire off their automatic weapons or, you know, you know, semi-automatic pistols at any time of the night. My son was awakened, um, three nights ago at 3 a.m. with automatic gunfire. Um, you know, uh, came into our bedroom and, and you know, woke us up. Uh, we, we heard it, so it wasn't just like it was just one, one spat. Um, somebody was back there for probably around 10 minutes, um, you know, with, with this kind of gunfire. So it's something I think we need to address, uh, you know, because it's happening all over our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I'm Sam Coleman, member of the Metro Council. On behalf of our council, we thank you for your service and what you do. I'll just say briefly, um, I'm not sure what it is Metro government can do and help police in the area, but no doubt about it that I'll talk with our chief of police, our division of codes, whatever collaboration we could come up with to provide the kind of safety that my neighbors are talking about, I'll be willing to help out in that regard. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Oh, it's, hey, yeah, shows a good interest. When we're called upon, we come. Uh, good, good morning, y'all. Uh, my name is John Stern, and I'm here as the chairman of the Nashville Neighborhood Alliance, uh, which is the umbrella group for neighborhood organizations through Davidson County. But I've also had, have been a resident over uh, off of a Percy Priest Lake for 20-some-odd years. And usually when I was hearing issues regarding gunfire uh, during the day and at night, it was issues that were downtown, not out in uh, Hermitage or Antioch, Tennessee. I know that we all have a right now to carry a gun, but I don't know that we all have the right to discharge a firearm in public, except maybe under the guidance of uh, this commission or this agency. I would like to see relief for the homeowners surrounding the area, and I'd like to see a moratorium on, on, uh, on, on gunfire of any kind in the area. So I appreciate your all's hard work and uh, uh, wish you all the best. Thank you, Mr. Stern. Representative. Mr. Chairman, and I gave the evidence to the officer over there. He'll give it to you after it's over with. Um, so I, I think you get uh, a feeling of what, of what I'm hearing and, and, and take the opportunity to express to you all, my request uh, would, would be to have some kind of alternative. I don't know, I would leave it up to you all whether you know, 
you do put a barricade back up, or maybe it's bow only, or maybe you know some kind of alternative to give some relief to these homeowners. I'd be grateful for that. I was I, I met with with Chris at um, at TWRA, came into my office and and because Representative Jones and I do have a placeholder bill, but we are encouraged to come to you all and 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 for, go through the process, and that's what I want to do, and and hopefully try to get some relief for these good folks and. And, and look at the evidence because I, I do believe there is a, as a safety issue because we're just, Nashville's just sprawling out and, and it would just be in Davidson County. But with that, um, I say thank you. Thank you so much for letting them speak and listening to them. That's very important. Calvin Coolidge said a man never listened to himself out of a job. So that's, uh, I, I, I do appreciate it. That, that's, I believe that's going to wrap it up for us. Thanks, Any questions sir. for me? Um, I'm sure we're going to have some comments right here. So okay, you, fantastic. Um, okay. Um, I mean, as, as you know, Tennessee is a is a right to hunt state. Oh sure. And uh, and we're we're here to protect that adamantly. And I I was looking in our hunting guide and it clearly states Piercy Priest center fire prohibited in all units. So if if they've got a center fire weapon there which would be a 223 or a nine millimeter or, or any of those weapons that you're finding the ammunition and hearing more than one shot, the rapid fire, then we as a commission, we've, uh, it, we've prohibited that. So they, they are breaking the law. It sounds like we might have an enforcement issue and uh, uh, I'm sure working with Metro, we can, we can address that and uh, but I, I, I guess that's, that's basically. I mean, we've we've got the we're, we're prohibited them from doing that. I guess we just need to step up the enforcement and uh, and work with some partners and and to get a handle on this. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Go ahead, Miss Woodson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to just. Um, generally thank the citizens who have taken their time to be here today. I know that that's not an easy thing and um, us being on a dais and uh, visiting to us it can be a little intimidating and I really appreciate the time that you all have taken um, to visit with us. That is not an easy thing and your time is valuable. One. Uh, second, um, Representative Jernigan, I've had the privilege of working with him for many years uh, preceding his, um, his time in state service uh, as a public official and really appreciate the time that you have taken as well and the approach that you're taking on this issue. Um, I guess just general comments to my, my colleagues as I'm thinking through this, um, the Coolidge comment is an important one to be a listener. And I, in, in my attempts to listen today, I also am reminded that there's a lot of information that I don't have um, that I would like to have um, to make informed decisions. But as I was listening, I heard important things um, and, and this is really just tagging off of the chairman's comments a little bit we've got a, a very specific miss mission as an agency but you all have raised priority issues of security automatic weapons being discharged um, issues that very much seem to be law enforcement related and I very much appreciate um, Councilman Coleman for taking time to come down here to say not only is this an interest, but to volunteer his time. And so I, I feel like there's a first obvious step of coordination among agencies, from the Corps of Engineers to the agency to Metro and the law enforcement um, folks there to think about this issue in terms of enforcement because hunting and fishing in the lists of concerns that folks have um, seem certainly less imminent. Um, they certainly um, are of all of the drug use, automatic west weapons, a time like New Year's Eve that would be an obvious place where inappropriate and illegal activity is taking place. I mean, those seem like smart minds in law enforcement and within the agency can put their heads together. And I think perhaps, um, again, and I know that this is a conversation that perhaps has happened before, but unfortunately that was before my time on the commission. And so I do, I want us to exhaust those collaboration opportunities. And so I might ask, I don't need, um, Tim Kimmel is here, and I don't have any questions for you, Tim, other than I'll, I'll, if it's all right with you to, to lead that collaboration, and you're happy to visit. I don't really have any questions, but I, 
the agency's been um, very proactive in, in collaboration, and we have a member of Metro who's offering collaboration on Metro side, and I have a feeling before uh, sundown, there's going to be, maybe before noon hits, there will be a conversation before those two gentlemen about how we might be proactive, and, and to the extent that Representative Jernigan um, and these citizens can be engaged in that collaborative conversation, I think that would be very helpful. But that seems like a first obvious step to get more information, but certainly the law enforcement aspects of this, based on what's in this important book, the mission of the agency, and the concerns of the neighbors, that seems like a, an important first step. So I might make that a suggestion, and um, I, Mr. Cleveland is saying yes, so, and I'm getting nods from Metro as well. Thank you, Ms. Woodson. Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and really, thank you to every one of you that have come here today. Uh, I know this takes away time from work or other things that um, are a priority, and you've made this a priority. Therefore, we got an obligation to make it a priority. Um, the matter at hand, I share, Commissioner Woodson says it's so much better than me, so forgive my fumbling. Um, this is not a hunting issue. This is an illegal activity issue. Uh, and sir, I respect the, the idea of a potential buffer, but the folks that are doing this to these neighborhoods, if they're not respecting the laws that are in place right now, uh, they will not give a flying flip about a buffer. We must address illegal activity. Uh, and that is what this is about. Uh, number two, is I believe our relationship with Metro is, is tremendous. I have family that serves on Metro. And I know the relationship that our law enforcement has with other local law enforcement. And I'm confident that a plan can be developed to give this attention. It will not be solved overnight. It's going to take some time. Uh, but know that it will be addressed. Please know that. Uh, the third component of this is I, I'm, I'm cautious that the hunting community may get thrown into this same tub of water that, uh, that the illegal activity is about simply because some of the hunting community, the shotgun, the duck hunters or whoever do use guns. And I would beg each and every one of you not to do that. Um, the, one of the reasons I'm speaking is, is that in Knoxville, I'm from East Tennessee, we go through this. One of our wildlife management areas is in the heart of Knoxville, Forks of the River. And there is mountain biking, there is hiking, and it is also set aside uh, for hunting during particular seasons. And it has been a learning road. Uh, in fact, I'm real glad John Gregory is here because he has been the quarterback at making that come together. It's been a learning experience, but I think it, will, it is a learning experience that Hopefully, we can take some of the lessons there, translate them to here so that you won't have to go through some of the toe stumps that, that we have gone through. Um, likewise, whenever we hear that there's illegal activity at, a, at, a, at a lake access area, WNA, wherever, we take that very seriously. I would substitute another word for very, but uh, there's ladies here and I'm not going to go there. Uh, it gets us mad up here when that takes place. And I'm confident that there will be a showing of law enforcement from both bodies that will begin to curtail this. But the two key comments I would offer to you is that, just kind of summarizing this, number one, I don't hear things that are a hunting issue. Walking through the backyards, we can, we can take care of that for those folks who want to abide by the law, okay? Uh, so please don't lump the hunting community in with the illegal activity. The, the ammo I'm seeing, that's not hunting ammo, and it's definitely not legal under the regulations that we have set up, and we will address that. The second thing is that we do ask for time. You have our word it's going to be addressed. It's going to be addressed promptly. It may have to be readdressed, and it is a partnership that we must have with you all. We need to know when this is taking place. Um, and I believe between the two law enforcement agencies that you will see a significant turn in the very near future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else on the commission? Anybody else from the audience? 
again, we we really thank you for coming out, taking your time. Um, like like we've said, it's going to be a partnership between us and Metro and probably the core, and we will we will address it. And we appreciate your approach. Uh, this is communicating with us is the best way to to get it done, and Chris appreciates that. So. Uh, uh, but we really do appreciate y'all taking your time and coming, and and we will. He's already shaking his head. We're, we're working on it right now. So thank you. We're going to take about a short 10-minute break and uh, let the parties meet together, and that way we'll be back uh, probably about 10. <laughs>